Uh, we start off from Parliament because the majority leader of CHA Mensa Bonso has revealed that the current negotiation with the International Monetary Fund will delay the presentation of the 2023 budget. The Public Financial Management Act mandates that the budget is presented by the 15th of uh, this month, but speaking to journalists, uh, Osei Chaiman Sabunso indicated that the team from the IMF is expected in the country by next week for further details, and it's unlikely that the budget will come uh, as stipulated. Let's listen. I'm not too sure as a city. I still have to have some discussions with um, the minister responsible for finance to determine exactly when you'll be able to submit the document to us. As you do know, the Public Financial Management Act provides that um, the budget should be presented to the House latest the 15th of this month. Um, the discussions that are going on now involving the, the, um, the IMF, I think is going to take a little bit of a while. My understanding is that um, it will go into um, the first few days of next week, uh, around the 10th or so. If, if that is the case, uh, you know, you then have to strand out the conclusions and factor them into the budget. And um, after we've succeeded in doing that, because it's a budget for government, it will have to go before cabinet some discussions, integrations, and maybe um, additions and subtractions before it comes ultimately to Parliament. So I believe it's going to be uh, quite difficult to, to submit to the 15th deadline. I don't know. I'm just conjecturing. Um, but if you want to do a tidy work, maybe you require to have some space to be able to do um, uh, retirement because as we all do know, these are uh, not normal times and you want to do uh, a tidy job in order to reposition the country. Nothing should be done which eventually become uh, wishy-washy. We want to have the best to be able to um, uplift us from where we are as a country. And that being the case, if you want to do a thorough job, I think there will be too much pressure if it has to be done on the 15th. If it comes before, if it comes after the 15th, let's face it, it will not be in breach of the Constitution. The Constitution provides that uh, the last date of presentation should be the 30th of November. So it will not be in breach, but we ourselves brought it forward to um, to the 15th of November, because we want more time to interrogate the, the principles underpinning the budget. Indeed, we belong, Ghana belongs to um, the IPU, the Inter-Parliamentary Union. And the IPU as a body of parliaments, um, it is, that has taken the position that parliament should work towards having presentation of budgets for consideration and passage um, at least eight weeks before the, um, the beginning of the next succeeding financial year. And that is why we, we said, okay, then let's bring it forward to um, the 15th of November. That will give us about six weeks. Uh, so what's the latest in Parliament? Uh, Kwiku Asante is our parliamentary correspondent monitoring all of the events for us. Uh, Kwiku, thank you for uh, getting us the latest. I want to first of all, uh, st uh, I mean, deal with the concerns that this delay might be a breach of the Constitution, first of all. Let's tackle that. What responses are we getting from uh, leadership of the majority on that? Uh, quickly, it appears um, I'm having some challenges hearing you. Yes, uh, if you could just um, right. deal with that for me. Bless yes. So that, that is the chapter in the House. There are significant members of the minority leadership who, although are yet to go on record, are concerned that if government does not hold the budget by 15 November, they may be in breach of the Public Financial Management Act. The Public Financial Management Act, the PFMA, 
mandate that the budget must be presented by the 15th of November every year. And with this new analogy that the finance ministry is considering and what the majority leader has just announced, it may not be possible for the government to do so. That is just about a little less than two weeks away where government is expected to come to the House and present its financial estimates to, to Parliament. Now that, that seems to appear to be in limbo, there are those who are concerned that government will be breaching the laws. But just like you had um, Osei Chibben Sabonsu there, he does not think that will be in breach of the constitution itself. There are those who think if you are breaching the PFMA, there must be consequence. But he's looking at the bigger picture of the 1992 constitution itself, which mandates that the budget is presented um, before the financial year expires. The financial year will come to a close on the 31st of December. So he thinks that governments still have enough space to be able to consider that, and that moving the budget beyond 15th of November because of these IMF talks will not breach the constitution and hence will not be unconstitutional and something that they can consider. Uh, and this is the majority leader who's speaking in, in his capacity as a leader of uh, government business. Government business. Uh, uh, is there any explanation as to why we're not having a joint address, uh, i.e. having uh, the minority leadership also present there? Indeed, that was exactly what was expected to happen today. Both the minority and majority leaders were expected to be there to address pal uh, parliamentary press call on some of the concerns we've had since the House started and also to outline this kind of business. It would have been expected that if the minority leader was there today, he would have gotten some buy-in in terms of what exactly is happening. He wasn't there. The explanation was that he was caught up in some very urgent minority business, for which reason he could not attend this news conference. But there are those who are saying that it may be due to some of these issues having to do with the finance minister, whether or not the vote of censure has to pass, and whether or not these leaders are avoiding us. So these are all things that the factors that we are picking in the House. But the minority leader did not make it, and the explanation that the majority leader offered was that he was caught up in some urgent business for which reason he wasn't there. But just subsequent to that, about 15 minutes after that, both the minority leader and majority leader were on hand to receive um, the family of um, a former MP and a former minister of state who has passed on. So there are those who were concerned and asking questions. Just 15 minutes after that press conference, the minority leader was present to be able to receive the family of this um, late statesman, and why was he not available for this news conference? That is the chapter that we are picking in the House. Uh, and how about the other members of the House in terms of what their take on uh, it, the take is on this um, latest development that the budget presentation would have to be deferred? Indeed, the concerns are that listen, the, these are these are very key and crucial matters for which the leadership of the House must address. So usually, you will not get other MPs willing to comment on this until their leadership have waded into the controversy because this is something potentially for which reason people may be asking for heads to roll if the, the, the constitution is being breached according to some of the minority MPs. Then they will be asking for serious action to be taken. So ordinarily on such matters, they'll be willing and waiting for their leadership to commit and to say something for which reason they'll be able to follow the line. But of course, some of them have been speaking to me off the record and they are not very happy about this idea that the budget will have to be delayed. They yeah. think that the more you delay some of these crucial documents, the more the financial woes of the country deepens. Because the investor community is out there looking for this budget to see if there's anything in it that gives them confidence, that gives them something to be hopeful for in terms of how to stabilize the economy. So delaying it further is something that they are not very happy about. Mm. Okay, quick, bye for now. Uh, that's our parliamentary correspondent, Kweku Asante. Let me... Uh...